Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to bring you insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now bathing the planet and affecting us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being, Angwilda Wiecka. The Blessing Way, Transmuting Frequency. Among those of us that are aware of the current rising frequency, a common misunderstanding is that all we must do is be alive on the planet at this time, and la voila, we will evolve. That couldn't be further from the truth. While the available frequency is indeed becoming more expansive, we need to attune ourselves to it if we're to benefit from it. This requires action on our part in the form of personal processing, becoming conscious of our thoughts and actions, and attending to our environment. Everything expresses according to frequency. Therefore, every thought, feeling, mindset, object, or substance holds frequency. Combined, these frequencies dictate the overall frequency of an environment. Frequency is a two-way street. The frequency of our environment is impacted by our personal frequency and our personal frequency is influenced by that of our environment. For instance, environmental psychologists have known for years that it's much, much easier for employees to be positive and productive in an aesthetic, well-lit, clean, orderly office than a cluttered, dark, dirty one. Why? Because the former has less restrictions and promotes higher frequency emotions while the latter is heavy, cumbersome, and depressing. The overall emotional frequency of the employees sets the tone for everyone in the room. With this understanding, to give ourselves every advantage, it makes sense to promote higher frequency environments in our homes and workplaces. In the search of ways to cooperate with and take advantage of the rising ambient frequency, I would be remiss to leave out the amazing power of gratitude. Among high frequency expressions, gratitude is topped only by unconditional love. While many of us understand the importance of simple gratitude in all things, few know how to consciously wield this powerful and transformative expression. I introduced the importance of gratitude in the prior Stairway to Heaven episode 10, Grace, the Great Transformer. Now we'll delve deeper into the concept and discover ways we can actively engage it. With some easily learned techniques, we can transform our environment and everything in it to better support us as we climb the frequency stairway to unity and enlightenment. The concept of the Blessing Way first came to me when I was studying drum making with my Lakota teacher. We no longer live in the old ways where we roamed the prairies harvesting and curing our own hides. This elk hide was purchased, and we have no way of knowing if it was taken in a good and respectful way, he shared, while reverently running his weathered brown hands over the rawhide. He had it soaking in a barrel of water. I'd helped him fill the barrel, carrying bucket after bucket from the nearby stream. Then, once it was filled, I marveled as he prayed over it in his melodic Lakota before placing the hide in the water. Is that why you prayed to the water? I asked. No. I prayed to the water to give gratitude for its service in soaking the hide. Okay, so how do we fix the rest? I wanted to know. My teacher proceeded to show me how to start by focusing on the hide soaking in the barrel and follow it back down the entire process it went through before ending up with us. He instructed me to give gratitude for each step of the process, the materials used, and the hands that tended it. Once we reached the elk itself, we gave gratitude to the animal for sacrificing its life. We promised to use its hide in a sacred way. This was done using shamanic journey to move backwards in time, but simply following the path in one's imagination works as well. We performed the same process with every article used in building the drum. We blessed not only the wooden hoop, the hands that made it, the tree that provided it, and the earth from which it came, but also all the tools we employed while making the drum. This was to be my first ceremonial drum, and I was extremely excited. In fact, I was somewhat impatient with all the methodical steps of the process, but he insisted we take our time and not miss a single one. However, once my drum was complete, I was grateful we took all the time in ceremony. I was amazed how different it was than the one constructed from the same materials, but purchased from a store. My shamanically crafted drum had a life of its own. You could not be in its presence without being impacted by its power and sacredness. More than 40 years later, it remains the same. 
My old teacher and his wife lived on a reservation. They didn't have many possessions, yet each was treated with care and reverence. He had a rusty old coffee can with holes punched in the bottom. There was a piece of baling wire running through the holes in the rim for a handle. Yet, coarse as it was, there was something incredibly special about it as it sat next to the door on the woodpile. Come time to perform the Anipi ceremony, he'd take it from its ha his house to the sweat lodge, put coals from the sacred fire into the can, and scatter sage over the coals to burn. He used the smoke to purify the lodge and all that entered. Everything the earth provides must be blessed and received with a grateful heart, or it will die and foul your space, he said when I asked him if he used the same method to bless the can as for the elk hide. Suddenly I realized why being in their one-room shack with its meager belongings always filled me with peace. Due to his practice, everything in his space was sacred and held high frequency. It was alive. Everything we own has frequency. This frequency is a conglomeration of frequencies from the composition of the thing itself to every hand that touched it during its creation and thereafter. It also carries the often ego-based wishes, hopes, and dreams we may have held for it when we acquired it. If it was a gift, it probably carries additional agendas from the giver. All these energies, wishes, hopes, and agendas are, as a rule, mostly unconscious and low frequency. What if everything in my home had been cleared of trauma and agenda, blessed with prayers of gratitude? What if instead of boycotting things in China under abusive manufacturing practices, I gave gratitude for them and the hands that made them? It would be like spreading high-frequency gratitude down the line of everything I own to every country and individual that had touched it and finally back to the earth itself. I came to understand that frequency compromises are in everything we do and produce. For instance, how many of us are conscious and purposeful all day at work? Do we stay focused on what we're doing, or does our mind wander to what's going on in the rest of our life? Are we working with gratitude and blessing towards our task, or do we resent spending time on it? When we purchase something, do we do it in gratitude for all that went into creating and delivering it to our hands, or do we unconsciously hope that that smashing red color will make our house look more impressive to others? Do we hang our happiness on the acquisition, setting it up to fail? When we give someone a gift, do we truly release it to them, or are there still strings attached? Do we have the implied wish, now you'll be grateful, the next time I want something, you'll remember this expensive gift I gave you, or now will you love me? Every one of these conscious or unconscious intents imbues the article, establishing its frequency. When you have an article in your environment, it influences the overall frequency wherever it's placed. There's this interesting thing about frequency. It'll settle to the common denominator. Like pouring cold water into hot results in lukewarm, introducing low-frequency items to high-frequency environment will compromise the overall frequency. Living in a compromised frequency environment drags down our personal frequency. So what can we do about it? As we contemplate all this, it's hard not to look around at what surrounds us and throw our hands up in despair. I won't lie to you. It's a big job, this living consciously. Content yourself with the thought that it's not a matter of perfection. Anything you do helps. You really have more personal influence over frequency than you might think. In fact, you can transmute the frequency of any environment by being mindful of the frequency of everything you put in it, including your attitude. We either enhance or diminish frequency with our thoughts, mindset, and feelings. This is not to suggest one go into denial of any negative thoughts or feelings they have. That would actually be more damaging. Denied feelings carry a lot of power. When we deny something, oh, it's still there, but it's no longer under our conscious control. Denied feelings end up running amok in our world, doing gosh knows what without our awareness. By taking time to find gratitude for any circumstance, we can transmute our feelings rather than deny them. By treating things with reverence rather than disdain, we make them sacred regardless of what they are. Holding that in mind, I'll share some guidelines for acquisition, possession, and release that have helped me. It's best to start with one room that's important to you, 
your bedroom's a good choice, providing a place of high frequency to rest and recharge. First, decide the purpose of the chosen room. Next, evaluate everything in it to see if it's aligned with that purpose. Bear in mind that things of beauty have purpose, as beauty, by its very nature, opens our hearts and promotes expansive frequency. Next, we need to reduce drag. Everything we own, in turn, owns a piece of our energy. It's therefore very important to be mindful of what we choose to possess. By occasionally taking stock of what we have, determining if it serves to support us, and removing it if it does not, we can refine our environmental frequency and reduce our overall energetic drag. If we own things that remind us of or belong to someone else, that person becomes an influence in our environment, and therefore, for better or for worse, imposes upon our personal frequency. By removing or clearing the things that hold us to a frequency that may not be in alignment with who we are or hope to become, we support our purpose. This, in effect, reduces the energetic drag that we have to push through to embrace our higher frequency and achieve what we've chosen in any circumstance. Remove the things that are not serving the environment and set them aside for further evaluation. Physically clean the room from top to bottom. Smudge it and every object in it while holding love and gratitude for all the things and the room itself. In this way, I recharge every room in my house every time I clean. Next is blessing things to their purpose. In your imagination, journey one by one to the origins of every article you've decided belongs in the room. Give gratitude for its original constituents, gifted at some point by the earth herself, all the hands that went into making it and delivering it to you. I call this the blessing way. This simple act sends high frequency down the line of an object's creation, not only raising its frequency, but offering gratitude to those that made it. It also removes the frequency of exploitation that may have been imbued into the articles by less than fair trade practices. Through this process, the article itself is transformed, creating another anchor for spirit in the mundane. Purposeful placement is a huge part in building frequency. It can be achieved by using the basic principles of feng shui or the seven directions observed by many cultures. Place furniture and articles in a room in such a way as to create flow and beauty. This also serves to make a living altar out of any room. After deciding the purpose of an article, bless it to that purpose. For instance, if the article is to represent abundance, hold it in state, I bless you with the frequency of abundance before placing it in the northwest corner of the room. If the article is your bed, say, I bless you to support my sleep, and so on. Now for discernment. By this point, you've created a pile of doesn't serve articles. Go through this pile and discern if it belongs anywhere else in your environment. If it doesn't, intend to pull your energy out of the article and release it, the object to its next purpose, wherever and with whomever that might be. Now this is extremely important step, as when we just throw or give things away out of hand, guess what? We throw or give away part of our energy right along with them. Being mindful of what you acquire and being willing to release an article every time you add another can help maintain your environment. When I acquire an object, I close my eyes and clear it with a thought of sage. In my imagination, I journey down its line, giving gratitude for ever, before ever leaving the store. To an outsider, it looks as if I'm just pausing to contemplate my purchase. The article is cleared and ready to be purposed before ever entering my home. I understand what a seemingly Herculean undertaking this is. Again, my advice, pick a single room that's very important to you and focus on it. When you've gone through the procedure once, you'll have freed up so much energy and the space has become so supportive, you'll be encouraged to continue. A clear, well-tended and uncluttered space supports the creative process much more than one full of conflicting compromised frequencies. A high-frequency environment of grace and beauty enhances our personal frequency, while one of low frequency and chaos diminishes it. My children often tease me about what they call my Zen environment. I simply respond, consider the alternatives. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. 
until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.